If you've been in the desktop 3D printing space for some years, you may have heard of a company called Lurge. They make 3D printer controllers, screens, and accessories with their first board being released back in 2017. This was a fairly inexpensive 32-bit board, especially when you compare it to other options that were available at that time. Last September, they reached out to me letting me know they were releasing a 3D printer called the Lurge iX, wanting to send over a unit for review. After seeing there was a $200 full kit option that they had plans to release the step files for the printed parts and that they were releasing instructions on how to flash clipper to their controller, I was intrigued and accepted. Well, we finished building this printer on stream a couple of months ago, so I've had some time now to see how it performs. In today's video, we'll be diving into the Lurge X. We'll go over the printer specs, what the build was like, as well as the setup process, how it prints, and I will give you my overall thoughts based on my experience with this printer so far. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Starting with the specs, the Lurge iX is a cantilever style 3D printer with a build volume of 180 millimeters in X, Y, and Z. The frame is made up of a 2020, 2040, and 4040 extrusion, making it quite stiff. The bed, hot end, and cantilever joining plates are made of a 6mm resin board, which does allow for some flex. For $20, you can get those upgraded in aluminum, which is what I recommend and what I went with. For motion, belts and roller wheels are used for X and Y, and a single lead screw for the Z axis. The bed comes with a powder coated PEI magnetic surface that I have been very happy with. The iX uses a Bowden extruder with an integrated filament runout sensor and PTFE lined hot end. They do sell a bimetal heat break upgrade for $4, which is what I went with, but it has given me some issues and we'll get into that a little bit later on. Other than the tool head wires, all the wires are routed through two small cable chains, which keeps everything neat and prevents any pinching. Both the X and Y axis have belt tensioners and the bed leveling is set manually through the screen since there are no tensioning knobs. The power supply, power input, and a relay are mounted on the back side of the machine with the controller along with the screen tucking partially under the bed on the front side of the printer. As for the controller, the Lurge iX ships with the Lurge Z board running the latest Lurge firmware and for drivers it's using TMC2226 step stick or Palulu style drivers. For interfacing with the printer there is a 3.5 inch touchscreen that will be used to start prints and configure the firmware. You can print files from a micro SD card, a full size flash drive, or over USB. Something pretty unique about this printer is that there are three versions. There is a kit version, there is a ready to print version, and there is a kit no printed parts version. The ready to print version will have you do just a little bit of assembly and then you are ready to print. The kit version gives you all of the parts to build this along with the printed parts and the kit no printed parts version comes with all of the parts to build this and no printed parts which is the version that I went with. Lurge has the STLs for this printer hosted on their website along with printables.com. They also have the schematics for the machined plates so if you do have access to something like a CNC machine you could cut out your own parts. The interesting choice with the ready to print kit or the kit that includes the printed parts is that they chose to to go with PLA Plus. I expressed my concerns about using PLA parts and they assured me that the printed parts were not load bearing and that under normal operation heat would not be an issue. That might be fine for something like a school environment but I still am not a huge fan of using PLA and I think many will want to probably print out their own parts. All the parts in red were printed by me in Polymaker Red Polylite ABS, and I didn't actually have to do any scaling even though I chose to go with ABS. As for the assembly, the entire Lurge IX build was live streamed over on the ModBot Army channel over the course of three streams. The build was really enjoyable. All the hardware is nicely labeled for each section, the wires are already ran through each cable chain, and there is both a detailed PDF guide along with an entire video series to help with assembling this printer. When we powered on the printer, the firmware was already flashed and set correctly for the Lurge iX and all that I had to do was do the bed leveling process. The process of leveling the bed is actually quite similar to what you would do with just traditional bed leveling knobs. Using a piece of paper, the nozzle moves to various points on the bed where you then adjust the Z offset from the LCD screen until the gap is correct and repeat this process until you've done so for all of the points. This will create a mesh that will run for every print. You can still baby step the tool head if you need to 
to when a print is running, but because the bed is quite stiff and there are no springs, I didn't find myself having to adjust the bed more so than that initial setup process. On the final live stream in the series, we played around with creating a printer profile based on the Ender 2 and pushed the machine a bit to see its limits. As for flow, up to 12 cubic millimeters a second, we had pretty consistent results. And once we went north of that, the quality declined very quickly. They do provide a PLA profile for Prusa Slicer, but looking through it, some of the choices were pretty questionable to me, like setting the default layer height to 0.3 millimeters. My original plan was to build the printer, make sure everything was running correctly, and then instantly jump in and flash Clipper. That's actually the reason I added this inductive probe to the tool head, because I don't believe that Clipper has a manual mesh setup, sort of like the Lurge firmware has. However, during the live streams, I had a couple of requests to just use the printer as is with its stock firmware, so for all of my testing so far, that is what I have done. I did swap out the tool head for a remix by Killa Prince that is the exact same tool head with the exception of it uses brass inserts instead of self-tapping plastic screws because I definitely prefer that and it also has a mounting point for this inductive probe. As for the stock large firmware, there is very little that I felt like I was missing. It has all the basic and advanced functionality you would expect from a 3D printer firmware down to firmware retract and linear advance. Since the entire firmware can be configured from the screen, you really have a lot of control. The main thing you will be missing with the stock firmware is input shaping, which may or may not be a big deal depending on what your plans are for this printer. If you do want to go the clipper route, Lurge has provided a bin file for flashing the board, a config file for the Lurge IX, and a pinout for the Lurge Z to help you quickly get up and running. It is worth noting that if you do decide to flash Clipper onto this printer, you will no longer be able to use the stock or the included touchscreen. As for printing, when I first started off with the Lurge IX, I was really just trying to push it to see what sort of performance I could get out of this printer. With the acceleration set to 2000, print speeds north of 100 millimeters per second, and getting close to that max flow rate of 12 cubic millimeters per second, I was quite happy with the results. However, when I started to slow things down and try to build a profile that I can get more consistent results for everyday printing, I ran into some issues. This started off as under extrusion and then led to filament not extruding at all. I spent quite a bit of time troubleshooting and originally thought that the issue was with the extruder. The stock extruder has no easy way to adjust tension and the tensioner spring is quite stiff. When I removed the extruder motor, I saw that filament had gotten stuck around the gear, so I cleaned it off thinking I had resolved the issue, which ended up not being the case. After diving in a bit further, I believe it is heat creep related and actually stems from that bimetal heat break. I've tried reseating it a few times, adding boron nitride to it and lowering the printer's temps, but the results have still been pretty hit or miss. The mounting points on the heatsink look identical to the Micro Swiss or Dragonfly hotends, so I may end up doing a complete swap in the future. For now, unless you're planning on printing with higher temp materials, I would recommend just going with the included PTFE lined heat break. I know a few others that have either purchased or received this machine and are running that PTFE lined heat break and they have not had any issues. As for the prints I got when pushing the flow or in between the extrusion issues, they really are not half bad. And I'm sure with further profile tuning for things like the material flow and retraction, they could look even better. For layer cooling, the printer is using a 4020, which although is quite a noisy fan, does provide pretty good cooling. The biggest improvement I could see for it would be a better fan shroud. The stock one only hits the part from one side, which will give you much better results on the side of the part facing towards the fan. I mentioned earlier that Lurge told me they had planned on releasing the step files for all of the printed parts on the iX. As of me making this video, I don't see those files over on their website, on printables, or anywhere else. I did request an update on this, but due to the fact that the Chinese New Year is going on right now, I don't anticipate I'll actually hear back for at least another week or two. When I do, I will post updates in the description or in the comments down below, and hopefully a link over to those files. During the live stream build of this printer, I had one or two viewers pop in asking why somebody would get something like this when you can get an Ender 3 with a bigger build volume, the price point that is the same, if not even less, and be up and printing in a fraction of the time, which is a really good question. If the goal is to just get a budget 3D printer and to get up and printing as quick as possible, then 
the Lurch IX definitely doesn't make a whole lot of sense. However, if you are wanting to put together an entire kit, whether it's for the experience of doing so or the fun of it, and you enjoy printing out your own parts and potentially modding some things, I think you'll have a very difficult time finding a comparable printer for around that $200 price point. There are a few mods already out there, like a Direct Drive Orbiter V2 mount and a linear rail upgrade. I imagine once these step files are released, the mods should definitely grow because it'll be much easier to take these existing files and just tweak them to your liking versus having to 3D model them from the ground up. As much as I am not crazy about the stock extruder and hot end combo, it is a really solid base and I am very excited to see what sort of things people come up with. As far as I know, this is the first ever 3D printer released by Lurge, and they definitely did a phenomenal job with both the build as well as their calibration guides. This makes the build much more enjoyable and easy enough to follow even if you are a complete beginner. There are a lot of positives with this printer, but there is definitely still some room for improvement. I would love to see a proper tensioning mechanism for the extruder, and I would love to get to the bottom of what is going on with my bimetal heat break. I'm debating on just ordering another one along with the stock PTFE one to see if I can narrow it down even a little bit more. If there's interest in me modding this printer, let me know in the comments down below. And if you have any ideas for what you'd like to see, I definitely already have a few in mind. And that has been the Lurge IX. That was a lot to cover and I still feel like there's probably more that I wanted to cover, but hopefully I was able to answer the majority of your questions and at least give you a good enough idea of what this machine is all about and if it's something that maybe you would be interested in. If I did not answer a question that you have, let me know in the comments down below and I will do my absolute best to answer. And as always, if I don't have the answer to your question, I have no problem reaching out directly to the manufacturer to try to get that answer for you. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel, furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.